this was the first cassette deck that I bought for a very long time when I wanted to get back into playing music from cassette tapes. If memory serves correct, I bought this about, a, I'd say two years ago. And I bought it to match the accompanying Panasonic 8-track stereo receiver, which I made a video on not too long ago. And I bought this for two, two well actually one reason, and that was its design. You see, this is one of the few Panasonic, or later Technics by Panasonic, cassette decks that has actual, honest-to-goodness, analog view meters. But if I recall correctly, this was one of only a few other cassette decks that Panasonic, or Technics, happened to manufacture that had analog view meters. The only other model I've seen is a circa 1980s Technics cassette deck, and it has it follows a different style, a different design. It doesn't have this wood grain up on the top. It doesn't have... Uh, this sort of 1970s styling. It has more of the 1980s styling and it does have analog view meters but they use the uh, customary 1980s neon green and orange coloring for the view meters. I actually just recently dug this cassette deck out of storage not too long ago because I was just relying upon my Technics M218 cassette deck which is connected up into my audio mixer. I was just using that for my cassette transfer and listening needs. But I've, since I've gotten that Ankyo stereo receiver, I've been in need of yet another dedicated cassette deck. So this was up to the job, and even after being in storage for about a year and a few months, it still plays fine. The belt is working, as do the view meters. You have the power button up here. Your piano key controls for pause, record, play, rewind, fast forward, stop, and eject, which are color-coded. Eject. It's blue and record has this little orange tab on it. Get an analog tape counter here that works as well as does the belt for it. Left and right microphones so for whatever reason record stereo audio and you have two microphones that have quarter inch jacks you can do so. Your input selection you can record between the microphone inputs or the permanently attached RCA line level inputs. And this was a feature that Panasonic definitely wanted to boast of. This cassette deck not only has the option to play Type 1 normal bias cassette tapes or Chrome Type 2 high bias cassette tapes, but also Type 4 metal tapes. Which is one of the reasons why they went to the trouble of putting this metal logo here, as well as boasting of the MX head here, which was necessary for recording and playing back Type 4 metal cassette tapes. You have separate input level controls, which is something I will never understand why cassette deck manufacturers thought was a good idea, because unless you're recording audio through microphones and you want to mix them independently, this is a real pain trying to get both channels to record at uniform volumes if you're recording through, once again, the line level inputs, because going off of the view meters never gets you exactly uniform sound. You can get within the ballpark, within the same, same general sound level between the left and right channels, but when you play it back on a computer or watch the waveform, you'll probably always notice that one channel is almost always quieter than the other. And I tucked this away here for safekeeping. When I bought this cassette deck, it came with the original operating instructions, which was quite a nice bonus because when I bought this deck, I wanted to have the instruction manuals with it, and somebody was selling a PDF of this four or five page manual for $24 and something like five or six dollars shipping, which is highway robbery for just a little leaflet here telling you pretty much what you already want to know, but it's sort of nice to have as a reference, and it also gives you the specifications over on the back. Panasonic Company, division of Matsushita Electronic Corporation of America, Sea Caucus, New Jersey, Panasonic Hawaii, printed in Singapore, and that's where this cassette tech was made. You can see the increase in frequency response that you get with using a chrome type 2 or metal type 4 cassette tape. 20 to 17,000 hertz with type 4, 20 to 16,000 hertz with chrome, and only 20 to 15,000 with regular normal bias cassette tapes. This has one head for recording and playback as well as a ferrite head for erasure. And this is not an auto-reversing cassette deck, so you just have the one head, it's on a flippy style head. I know V Westlife definitely dislikes them, as do I, because of their 
incessant desire to constantly come out of calibration and mess up your azimuth alignment. Unlike the more expensive Pioneer and TF cassette decks, as well as other cassette decks from different manufacturers, except those were the two that came to mind first and foremost, you don't get any sort of a light that illuminates behind your cassette tape to let you know and help you to see how much tape you have remaining. And they didn't even put a sticker here. I know on my Technics M218 they put a little orange sticker there just to help with reflecting light. If you notice, I just slid this off. You can see that the cover has four plastic pegs which slide into place. You just put it over top and push down. Lift up when you want to remove this. And that will allow you to gain access to the azimuth alignment which has never been adjusted nor calibrated on this deck. The Loctite or whatever they use there to hold the screw in place is still there all these years later. When I first got it everything was coated in a yellow tar-like substance. You can see some evidence of that on that uh, the plastic holder for that pinch, pinch wheel, pinch roller. It's all yellowed by age. Everything was coated in like a sludge. You can see there's still some debris down here from previously played and recorded on cassette tapes, but I can't even get in there to clean it. It doesn't affect its operation. Unlike the newer model cassette decks from Technix and Panasonic that had actual electronic logic controls, all mechanical, so even though we're not connected up to power, you can see the mechanism engage. And just in case this wood cover had anyone fooled, they went to the trouble of letting you know that it's just a simulated wood cabinet and that sticker was printed in Singapore as if it bears any repeating. And that was one of the reasons why I bought this cassette deck. I was quite keen on the design of it. It matches pretty much any component you put it next to. Aside from the dust, it's impeccable back here. It's got the power transformer with adequate venting. Your line in, line out jacks, which are permanently mounted, and that presents something of a challenge for those buying these units used. Because when I was looking in the market for cassette decks and I had my eyes out for them on a regular basis, I came across an alarming number of these Panasonic and Technics decks that had either the line in, line out, or both of these RC permanently mounted RCA cables slash cut or damaged. And uh, that definitely would present something of a problem. Noise reduction system manufactured under license by Dolby Laboratories. You have your service use only for adjusting tape speed. Looks like there's actually something in the way there, but if you use one of those special plastic adjustment screwdrivers that you use for calibrating electronics, you can just stick it in there, calibrate the speed without so much as needing to take this whole unit apart, which is actually a rather unorthodox affair you see that there's some screws here and you have to, if I recall correctly, to replace the belts. You can't just remove this bottom cover or remove this back cover. It doesn't even remove. I think it's permanently mounted. So the only access you get to this cassette deck is if you remove this cover up here and that doesn't give you access to replacing the belt. If memory serves correct and if the online articles and forms I read regarding the replacement of the belts in this cassette deck are to be believed. You actually need to remove this front cover and then I believe have to somehow gain access to the mechanism that way. Because when I was in here you remove the one, two, three, four, five screws that remove this cover you don't get access to the belts. I'm just glad, however, that the original belts are still good in this thing. It plays at perfect speed. I just need to adjust it slightly, and I use my Technics cassette deck as a baseline because that was I know that one plays at the right speed, but this one was playing a tad bit slow, and after adjusting it, it's as good as new. When I bought it, it actually came with this Sony HF tape. It has some mystery radio and audio recordings that are well, let's just say eccentric and eclectic. Don't know what the recordings are about, but they're really quite bizarre. And here's your daily dose of unimportant and unnecessary observations. This does not use a polarized plug, so if you want to take advantage of the switched or unswitched outlets that are provided for with your stereo receiver, you can plug this right up without having to use an adapter of some sort. This is the only audio component I can use with that outlet because my CD player and turntables all use polarized plugs. 
believe that's just a single incandescent light bulb which doesn't appear to be too bright at first glance but after we extinguish some lights it is fairly bright and just enough to illuminate and give us an idea of what we're, uh, what audio level we're recording at currently and here's what it would look like in total darkness and when I bought this cassette deck the person threw in this oddball single Jeff Foxworthy with Alan Jackson Redneck Games which is rather interesting from 1996 you have the single version of Redneck Games and then some sort of a comedy spiel The thing is, Southerners are as smart as, as anybody in this country. Our only problem is we just can't keep the most ignorant amongst us off the television. I mean, every time we have a disaster, they never film a doctor or a lawyer. They always get that woman in the moo-moo and the sponge roller. And I'll just go ahead and give you a demonstration of a Sony HF cassette tape, which sounds like it was recorded for vinyl, which it was. But this was actually a recording of a radio broadcast, so I don't know how old this recording is because I don't know of any radio stations that still play vinyl live on the air, but it happens to exist on this recording, and this can't be a very old cassette tape. Does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bed post overnight? If your mother says don't chew it, do you swallow it in spite?